Are you all right? Yep, I'm fine. Emily, let's talk portraiture. All right. So this is all about this competition then that uh, that, that uh, all based around your work or inspired by your work, really. Um, but I think, as we know, when people think about portraiture, they perhaps have sort of very fixed ideas. I think it'd be really helpful if you could give us give us something of a roller coaster about the different options of what people could consider portraiture to be. I mean, where would you, how, would, how would you describe your work? How, what sort of a portrait artist are you? Well, I'll start off with my latest show, which is in the Boynton Gallery. I'll give it a good plug there. But this is what inspired this whole competition. And that's a portrait of a woman who's a 91-year-old American-born poet. Uh, and I spent 10 years making this portrait film, which is now 11 minutes. So I went in there thinking I'm going to take a still of, of Ruth. I met her by chance and I met and thought it'd be, she'd be a great person to photograph. I went there and I realized there was more to this than could that, than a still could take. And I wanted to extend into sound and into moving image. So that's what that's that's what that piece is about. But actually, my whole history of photography, apart from I do a lot of different things, but I'm known as a portraitist. Uh, and I've been thrown into all sorts of situations. I mean, I worked for New Musical Express for 10 years, and that involved often 10 minutes, 15 minutes with somebody to photograph, not just musicians. It could be writers or they could be film directors. Uh, that gave me a really, really good. It meant I had to work on my feet. I mean, I just didn't or whatever. I just didn't have any time. I, I would go prepared. And then when, when, whenever I arrived, it would always be something different. So I tend that tends to be how I work. I go always with the right equipment, hopefully, and some film or digital files or whatever, and usually a couple of camera bodies and a couple of lenses at least, and some lighting and some reflectors. Now, you might not use any of that, but you will find that if you're technically up to speed, you have more of a chance and more of a choice. If you're not technically up to speed or if you feel it's too much to manage, take a mate with you who keeps quiet and just moves stuff around with you or for you so you can get the shots up, shots us set up. The main thing I would say with someone like Steve Pike, who you yourself, Jonathan, can tell us more about, he would go and take a portrait of somebody, but he'd often only meet them first just to talk to them. Then he would go back another time. I mean, that's a really luxurious way of photographing. I think when he did his philosophers and so on, he had that time. The main thing is you must remember that your photo, you must make this person feel comfortable enough so they so you are then able to hopefully direct them in the way that you want to make the portrait. But let them take the lead. Uh, listen to them. Don't talk a lot. Listen. That's really, really important. Uh, so technically up to speed, listening, respond to them. Think And also know who they are. If you're, if you're being asked to photograph someone who's a writer, know what they've written. You know, not in great detail, but just so you have a talking point if they do ask you any questions like, did you like my last book? <laughs> So what I'm hearing there is practice before you go in so you know your equipment, so you're not learning on the job. Take a friend if in doubt so they can help you out, put you at ease. And then uh, the third one is go prepared. So know the subject, know who it is you're going to meet so you can ask good questions and and, and listen to them. So, um, so you talked about this work here, which is an 11 minute film. That's not what people would think of when they think of a portrait normally. So... Can you give us some ideas of different sorts of portrait photographers that we could look at and why why we should look at them? Why are they so different? What, what do they represent for you? OK, well, I'd start with somebody like Diane Arbus in that she inspired me in the beginning to be a portrait photographer or to be a photographer. And she, of course, mainly shot black and white. I don't even know if she ever shot any colour. She's dead now. But she was a New York photographer. She would go out with a Rolly flex, a twin lens reflex and a, and a flash next to the camera. And she would she would wander around uh, Central Park and photograph people. And there's one particular photograph that she took, which is a, a young boy with a hand grenade. So she was very spontaneous in the way that she worked, but she would go back and back and back and photograph. So that's one sort of photography, I would say. Then in England, we had someone called Bill Brandt who was working at a similar time. Again, very carefully, put, very carefully thought out. They, all these photographers look at this, look at the frame. They're really, really careful about how they frame things. Obviously, it seems obvious, but it's one's never one can never be more aware of the frame or never be aware enough of the frame. Bill Brandt, Brandt, the picture I would really look at and the picture that's influenced me a lot is the photograph of uh, Francis Bacon, the painter, on Primrose Hill coming down with a lamp. Just look at that photograph. It's just brilliantly constructed. 
Uh, Zanelli Moholy, the South African photographer, they make wonderful portraits of people in the community that they know. They're, they're sort of relaxed. They look relaxed. They also make wonderful self-portraits. Really interesting. Again, technically really good. Then there's uh, Richard Leroyd, who makes very large photographs without a camera. He uses a camera obscura and he just uses paper, which then the light eventually... So the, the sitter's in one place, the light hits the paper, and then he just processes the paper. Uh, then there's Laura Panock, who photographs couples and pairs and single people and so on. Just lovely, relaxed sort of portraiture. Uh, there's Renee de Tegistra, who did many, many photographs of mothers and adolescent children on the beach. Large format, flash, beautifully positioned. Uh, Susan Lipper, who I see as somebody who's a, who's a, she follows from Harvest, she follows in that line, I think, in that trajectory. Uh, and I would look at her portraits. She's got four portraits of the same people, George Macbeth and his partner, who were both writers in the National Portrait Gallery. Look at those photographs. And I'm pretty sure that Susan used available light. But don't only use available light. Use I you try to use lighting so you don't necessarily know it's lit, but it just means you get that extra f-stop if you need and so on. I mean, that's technical stuff, but it all will help in the end. So in my portraiture, you could look at a lot of the portraits I do are environmental portraits. In my last book in 2018, which is black and white portraits, you see a combination of it's basically environmental. There are a few studio shots as well. So if you go to my website, you'll see uh, Dear uh, Amanda Gallas, which is shot in a studio, my studio at home. Or you might look at Stephen Frears and his daughter, Stephen and Lola Frears, in the environment at their, in their house. Uh, you could look at the picture of Arthur Miller, which was just when he was directing Helen Mirren. He was he was exhausted. He had a cold. It's just from the side, and he's nodding and just quiet. Uh, you could look at Tracy Chapman. Her I did some of the first photographs of Tracy Chapman for one of her. But it was her first album. Very very shy, but we went out to Kensington Gardens, which is right next to the to the recording studio, or actually next to her. Yeah, next to the recording studio, and I just chatted and. I was having to check, she was so quiet, and took a photograph there that was quite successful. Oh, then Sunil Gupta, he and I are very long-standing friends since the Royal College, and we've taken photographs of each other for years, and I've done portraits there with him, just in his house, but often he just wears, he, in fact, he has no top on, so it's just the top of his shoulders and so on. I mean, I can go on and on. I can describe every photograph. But I think, what would you like to know, Jonathan? No, I, I think you've given us a roller coaster. Is that enough? There. And, yeah. and what, okay. what you've given us there is some fantastic starting points and very different sorts of photography. You've given us black and white, you've given us colour, you've given us natural light, you've given us studio. So there's a whole range there. And, and, the, and those top tips at the beginning, go prepared, do your research before you arrive. And if in doubt, take a friend. I think that's gold dust. So I think that's a great start. Thanks so much, Emily. That's wonderful. Thanks, Jonathan. See you soon.